Okay, now that we know what serialization is and why we might want to use it, let's talk about how we can implement this in Python. Now, there are a number of ways that you could do this. You could even write your own class that does this. But a very common way of doing this in Python is to use JSON or Pickle. Now, I'm going to use JSON because it's implemented in a number of programming languages. So getting comfortable with it will actually help you in general as a programmer. Now, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's basically a way of converting data structures, such as dictionaries, lists, and objects, into a string or a text. Then we'll be able to send this text over the TCP stream. Once it's received, again, we'll use JSON again to convert this text back into its original data structure, whether it was an object, a dictionary, or a list, or any other data type. Now, like I said, JSON is very commonly used. It's actually used in a lot of apps where you have an app that communicates with a server on the cloud. So the way that the app communicates with the server and receive data from the server is using JSON. So it wraps all of its data in a JSON object. It sends it to the cloud and then the response comes back as a JSON object, which gets unwrapped in the app. And then you see the beautiful app with all the information and the services that offer. But usually a lot of this data is actually transferred as JSON strings. So let's go and put this in practice and you'll see that this is very, very easy. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to define a method and I'm going to call it reliable send. And we'll use this method instead of the socket send method every time we need to send data. Now this method is going to take the data to be sent as an input. And then the first thing that it's going to do is convert this data into a JSON object. To do this, we're going to need to import the JSON library. And then all we're going to do is I'm going to say JSON data, which is the name of my variable, is going to be equal to JSON dot dump s. So this is the method that will convert my data into a JSON object. And then I'm going to call the normal send method that we always use. So I'm going to do self dot connection dot send and we're going to send the JSON data. And that's it. This method is done. So as you can see, it's very simple. All we're doing is we're calling a method called dump s, which is implemented in the JSON class, which is we're importing in here. We're passing the data to it. So all of this is going to convert the data that we're getting as an input into a JSON object. We're storing this in a variable called JSON data, and then we're sending this variable using the normal send method that we always use. Now, because we're sending this data as a JSON object, our receive method needs to be able to expect this and unwrap this to read the data that's inside it. So it's very similar to what we're doing here. First of all, we put all of the data in our package or in our JSON object. We're going to transfer this object through the TCP stream and this will be received in our receive method. So we need to program this method in a way that it's able to open this package and read whatever data that's inside it. So we'll call this method reliable receive. And the first thing that this method will do is it's going to try to receive the object itself before even unwrapping it. So we're going to use the normal socket receive method. So I'm going to say my JSON data, this is still JSON, we still don't know what's inside it. This is going to be equal to myself dot connection dot recv. And we're only going to receive 1024 bytes. And once we receive this, we're going to be able to convert it into whatever object that it was by calling the load s method in the JSON class. And we'll pass the JSON data to it. 
and this will basically unwrap whatever data that's sent as the JSON object and return it to me. And since this is a receive method, I'm going to return this when the method finishes execution. So again, a very simple two line method. All we're doing is, first of all, we're receiving the data and we're storing it in a variable called JSON data. But this data is still in JSON format because we sent it in JSON format. So we have to unwrap this and we're doing this by calling the load s method which is implemented in the JSON class which we imported here and we're passing the JSON data to it. This will return the original data. So this will basically do the unpackaging, opening in this package and giving us whatever data that's in it. Now that's it, the methods are done and all we have to do right now is use them wherever we send or receive data in our listener and in our backdoor. So we usually send data in here. So this is where we call self.connection.send. And instead of doing this, we're gonna call self.reliable.send. And when we receive data in here, we're gonna call self.reliable.receive. And we don't need to put this anymore because the reliable receive don't take any input. And that's it. Now our listener is ready to use our reliable send and receive methods. The next thing that we need to do is use this in our backdoor as well. So I'm going to copy both of these methods and I'm going to paste them in my backdoor code. And we need to make sure again to use these methods whenever we're sending and receiving data. So I usually receive data in here. So I'm going to call self dot reliable receive. And again, remove this from here. And when we send data, we're going to call self dot reliable send. One more thing we need to do, as you know, these methods use the JSON library. So we need to import it in here. So I'm going to do import JSON and we're all set. Now there is still one issue with this code, but I don't want to show it to you now. I want to highlight this issue once we go and test this code. So in the next lecture, we'll test these reliable send and receive methods, fix any issues with them and make sure they can be used to transfer large amounts of data and data structures reliably.